All right, so today I wanna to take it back to the basics and chat with you guys about how to optimize your spending with your credit cards. Now, I think at a basic level, this is the foundation of anyone's credit card strategy. And without getting too in depth the details of you know transfer partners for airlines and how to optimize the spend of your points, I think if you have credit cards at all, I think at a bare minimum, you should be getting the best return possible by utilizing your credit cards for the correct spending categories. I think the whole point that we have credit cards and use them in the first place is one, to get rewards, two, to build your credit score, and three, basically get paid to make purchases you would already be making if you didn't have a credit card and you're using a debit card or cash. I think that with better returns, you're basically getting better value out of the purchases that you have to make in the first place. So I think it's a no brainer to make sure that you're optimizing your spend, especially when you utilize credit cards on an everyday basis. I think it goes without saying that in order to optimize your spending across spending categories and optimize it with credit cards is that you need to be sure that you're not spending more than the money that you have. So obviously you have to be responsible with using credit cards and understand the ways that it works and make sure you paid off in full every single month. If you're able to do that, which I'm sure you are because you're watching this channel, then you're on the right track to making sure that you're getting the best returns that you can across spending categories. So the way I'm gonna break down this video is talk about each specific spending category and give you guys some examples of credit cards that give you a great return for that specific spending category. Now the categories I'm gonna cover in this video are gonna be travel, which is gonna be flights and hotels, dining, which is essentially restaurants and takeout. It's also gonna be groceries, which is a big one for a lot of people. I'm also gonna include gas, as well as online shopping, which can include Amazon and other online stores. And then specific co-branded credit cards that you might wanna get better benefits out of specific spending categories that you have. Now across all these spending categories, we wanna set a benchmark like we did with our other videos talking about how to utilize your points and rewards miles. So basically we wanna get at least a 3X back on each of these spending categories, whether it's with rewards points, miles, or just cash back on that reward category. I think 3X back is a pretty good benchmark to set for what you wanna get back as a bare minimum for each of these spending categories. But if you're able to maximize this optimization process with all these credit cards, I think the best optimization is probably at 5X back, whether it's with points or miles or simple cash back on each of these spending categories. I'll say for myself, which I'm gonna talk about my credit card strategy probably in another video, but what I'm trying to do is ideally get at least 5X, whether it's with points or cash back on each spending category that I have, so that whenever I make a purchase, I'm basically getting 5% back. Now, with the first two biggest expenses that people have, generally speaking, which are gonna be housing and transportation, I'll say that generally it's gonna be not in your favor to pay these things with a credit card. So for example, if you own a home, you're gonna have a mortgage that you have to pay every month. Generally speaking, the fees tacked on to paying your mortgage with a credit card don't make sense. And currently speaking in the present day, there isn't a credit card that's gonna give you great returns on paying your mortgage with a credit card. I think generally speaking, banks don't wanna see that you're paying for something with credit for something that you've already purchased on credit, right? So a mortgage is gonna be there because you're buying a house on credit. And a credit card is obviously money you're borrowing that you're gonna pay off at the end of the month. So you're basically tacking on a loan on top of a loan, which doesn't usually work. Now, rent on the other hand is a different story. Now with this spending category in terms of housing, if you're able to pay your rent with a credit card, sometimes you get pretty good rewards, especially if you use the right card. And in this case, right now, the only card that I'm aware of that doesn't have fees tacked onto it, if you pay your rent with this card is the built MasterCard. I'm sure you guys have probably seen a lot of videos about that. It's become a lot more popular these days, especially because it's a no annual fee card and you can pay your rent with it. So, you know, what's not to like? Now, if you don't have the built MasterCard and for whatever reason you don't want that card, there's other options for this if you wanna pay your rent with a credit card. Now, the caveat here is that there's gonna be a fee tacked onto it. And so depending on the percentage, you might not be getting a good return by using your card to pay your rent or mortgage with that service. A couple of the popular third-party payment providers that accept credit cards include Plastic, PlacePay, Moolah, and Venmo. Now I'm gonna list the fees these companies charge to pay your rent or mortgage with these. And so you can decide for yourself if it makes sense whether or not you're getting a good return by paying your rent or mortgage through this service. Now I will say that if you're trying to meet the minimum spend requirement for getting the signup bonus for a new credit card you just opened, I would say this is a pretty good option so that you can pay your rent or mortgage, especially if it's gonna hit the minimum spend for that signup bonus. I would say it's generally gonna be worth it if you're getting that return through the bonus that you're getting by hitting that minimum spend with the signup bonus. If you can't organically do that, obviously through purchases you're making yourself. Now with the second biggest expense for people being transportation, which essentially is basically gonna be your car payment because if you're taking the Metro or you're taking public transit, it's not gonna be the same as a car payment every month. The fees tacked on to paying your lender with a credit card, which is again, double stacking the loan type situation, is not gonna be worth it in terms of a good return on paying with your credit card. So generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend this, although some lenders do accept it, you just wanna be careful about the fees they tack on for paying your car loan with a credit card. Now for the first big spending category, which is traditionally a bonus category for most credit cards, we're gonna be talking about travel. 
Now, the way I want to break this down is by travel in terms of flights or hotels. Rental cars and things like that are going to be included as well, but generally speaking, flights and hotels are going to be the biggest expenses when you're talking about travel. So if we start off with talking about flights, I would say that in general, you should be definitely getting at least a 5x return in terms of points or rewards miles or cash back for making a purchase on an airline for a ticket. I would also say that if you're getting into the higher tiers of rewards programs and the best ways to maximize those benefits, then these are the best ways you can double stack both the rewards in terms of the spending categories, as well as those added benefits of having specific credit cards. Now, a couple of great credit cards in terms of the travel spend category are going to include the Amex Platinum, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, the Venture X, even the Capital One Venture card, and a number of other credit cards. I would say there's definitely a multitude of options in terms of the travel spend category in terms of credit cards that give you a great return but those are some of the good options for you guys if you're not aware already. I would say that in terms of flights and hotels, there's definitely a lot of great co-branded credit cards in terms of credit card issuers that have a partnership with a particular airline or a hotel chain that give you great rewards and benefits for a particular airline or a particular hotel chain. Some of those examples are gonna be the Delta Sky Miles Reserve, the Hilton Honors Aspire, but obviously those are specific to a particular hotel chain or an airline. So if you're loyal to a particular one of those, then I would say it's a great option for you as well. Now, all the credit cards that I've listed in terms of the travel spend category have at least a 5x return on that spending category. So I'd say that meets our optimization benchmark of at least a 5x or 5% back on every spending category. Our next big one is going to be dining, which can be broken up into restaurants and takeout, which is also generally speaking a bonus category provided by most credit card issuers. Now for the dining spending category, I would say there's multiple ways to do this in terms of optimizing your spend in the best way possible, depending on how much you actually spend per month, I would say on dining, whether it's restaurants or takeout. Let's say you spend less than $500 a month specifically on restaurants. I would say your best bet is gonna be the city custom cash card. I think it makes it very easy to track your spend because you're only using the one card for that specific spending category. And with the city custom cash, it gives you 5% back on absolutely everything on that one spending category that's the highest per month. So you can obviously use this card for other spending categories if it's up to $500. But like I said, if you're only spending up to $500 a month, I think it doesn't make sense to have a card like an Amex Gold, which is gonna have a high annual fee and requires you to utilize all these different rewards and benefits throughout the year to actually get great value out of the card. Now, that being said, if you do spend more than $500 a month on restaurants or dining in general, I would say the other good option in this category is gonna be the Chase Freedom Flex, which has rotating categories. So depending on the month, you can get up to 5% back, especially if that three month period or quarter during the year is gonna be on restaurants or dining. The Discover It is an equally great option up to $1,500 per quarter on that spend category. So it's very similar to the City Custom Cash and that's basically $500 per month, but you're again getting 5% back on all those purchases that are in that spending category. Another great one right now, especially is the Capital One Saver One Rewards credit card. It actually has a $0 annual fee and you can get up to 10% back, especially in the first year with that promotional period. They have a pretty good offer going on right now. And in general, it's a pretty good credit card for restaurant rewards, being it's a $0 annual fee card. And of course, if you spend a little bit more on groceries and dining, I would say the Amex Gold is definitely a great bet, especially because it can be a good standalone card as well if you don't wanna use a travel rewards credit card like the Amex Platinum or Chase Sapphire Reserve, because the $250 annual fee with the Amex Gold is easily washed by the benefits and credits that you get. In addition to having pretty good benefits in the travel category, in addition to 4X back on dining and 4X back on groceries. Now our next key spending category is gonna be groceries, which I think for a lot of people is gonna be a lot higher if you don't eat out as much, and it can be vice versa depending on the type of person that you are. But I would say in terms of groceries, a lot of great options are gonna give you up to 5% back or more. And some of those great options are gonna include the Amex Gold that we just talked about, which gives you 4X back, the Blue Cash Preferred from Amex, which is actually great because it's $0 in the introductory year and $95 every year after that, and gives you up to 6% cash back, depending on the category, as well as once again, the Capital One Saver One card, which has again, a $0 annual fee and is a pretty good option for groceries as well. I'm gonna say once again, that the City Custom Cash is a great option for this one as well, because again, if you keep it under $500 of groceries per month, then you get absolutely 5% back on all of those purchases. I think it goes without saying that the City Custom Cash is a great flexible card in terms of low spending categories that you can get a 5% back on every single month. And for me personally, I find the simplicity of a card very important just because I don't have to think about it as much. And so if it's a specific spending category, I'm going to keep it to every single month that I can just use the Custom Cash and let's say restaurants or let's say groceries and just keep all my spend so I can also track it on that card when I go and pay it off every month. Other credit cards that are good for groceries are gonna include, once again, the Chase Freedom Flex and the Discover It with those rotating categories for spend. But the thing is with these categories is that they're not going to last the entire year. 
And so if you have a three month period of groceries, let's say for the Chase Freedom Flex from January to March, then it's not gonna be the same category for the following three months and same goes for the Discover It. So I would just keep that in mind because if you're getting 5X back for only three months out of the entire 12 months of the year, that's not a great return if you're gonna keep that specific credit card for only that spending category for the entire year. Now, the next spending category I wanna talk about is gas. So obviously if you have a Tesla or if you don't drive a car, then you can skip the next section. But for gas rewards, I think it's pretty critical, especially if you drive a lot and you're commuting to work. I would say it's a no brainer to get decent gas rewards because there's plenty of credit cards that offer a pretty good return. Now, some of the great gas rewards credit cards are gonna include the US Bank Altitude Connect, which is currently $0 for the first year and then $95 every year after that, which is also up to 5X points. Of course, the Chase Freedom Flex, the Discover It, and the City Custom Cash are gonna be included as well because of those 5X. And then as I've talked about in the past, the Costco Rewards Visa credit card is gonna be a great option as well, just because of the 4X back that you get on gas at Costco, and for the simple fact that Costco gas is cheaper than other gas stations. So if you do go to Costco regularly and you already have a membership, I think it's a no-brainer because you're gonna be double dipping with the low gas prices and getting 4X back in terms of simple cash back on those purchases. Now, the next category I'm gonna to touch on is online shopping. And what I wanna say is that this one is gonna very much depend on how you do your online shopping and whether or not it's specifically just Amazon or if you use other merchants online to make your purchases. Now, I think it goes without saying that the Amazon Prime Rewards card is gonna be a great option if you shop on Amazon a lot because it's obviously 5% back on Amazon as well as Whole Foods. The Amazon Prime Store card is essentially the same thing except that you only get 5% back on Amazon and there's no other spending categories that you get a bonus percentage back on. However, with the store cards, you also get five to 15% back on select promotional items at Amazon. So it's definitely an option to consider and weigh the benefits and drawbacks of those two cards if you're an avid Amazon shopper. Now, in terms of a credit card that offers, you know, 5% back on a return in terms of optimizing your spend for all of online shopping in general, I would say that there's not one that I'm aware of right now that does offer that but I would say the Bank of America Cash Rewards Card, which is basically their Bank of America Standard Rewards Credit Card, allows you to choose a specific spending category to get 3% back on for the entire year, which I think is a pretty good bet, especially if you're trying to blanket cover all of your online shopping on one credit card. The Bank of America credit card is also $0 every year, so you don't have to worry about an annual fee, and you get a pretty good return with 3X back on all online shopping. Now, if we're talking about streaming services in terms of online shopping, then the Blue Cash Preferred from American Express is a great option because you get up to 6% back on those purchases, as well as 6% back on supermarkets, up to $6,000 every year. That being said, there is an annual fee for the Amex Blue Cash Preferred after the first year, so I definitely say that's a consideration you have to make if choosing that card for this specific spending category. Now for our last spending category, which is gonna be business expenses. So specifically cards you're gonna to have to open if you have a business or an LLC that you're trying to cover purchases for on a credit card. I would say this is something that could take an entire video. I'm just gonna just touch on this briefly, but a couple of great options are gonna include the Capital One Spark Cash Plus, any of the Inc. business cards from Chase, which all of these offer you between one and 5% cash back. Of course, the Business Platinum from American Express, so I would say generally speaking, that sums up the major spending categories and the best ways to get up to 5% back on each of those categories. I think once again, it's a no brainer that you get the most value that you can by optimizing your spending and using the right credit card for each spending category. And let's say not using your Amex Platinum for everything across the board and only getting one X back outside of everything that's not travel. If you guys got some value out of this video, drop a like down below and comment if you wanna see more content on a specific spending category or more credit cards tailored towards a specific category that you might be using yourself. I think in the near future, I'll probably put out a video specifically talking about my credit card strategy and the best way that I'm going about maximizing, you know, the bonus categories and spend, utilizing the credit cards that I have in my wallet right now. But until then, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.